the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Reverend Dr. V. S. Verghese, Principal of the Matama Theological Seminary and President of this meeting, all the faculty members, students, and my dear friends. Greetings to all of you in the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. At the very outset, let me congratulate the Matama Theological Seminary Cotton for offering this online course on the subject Faith and Pandemic. As Reverend Dr. V. S. Vergis Achan rightly pointed out, the seminary has entered into 96th year of its ministry. And this year, when the world is at standstill, forgive me for using that word. I say it stands still because people are afraid People are anxious because of the COVID pandemic. And this is an opportunity for the theological seminary to spread its wings in offering a digital course. Usually the courses that are offered by the theological seminary are the courses that are attended by resident students staying in the campus and studying the subjects are very important as far as theological training is concerned. But now we are spreading the wings in offering this course so that so many people from across the world can join a course where all the scholars or the faculty in the Kotem Seminary can offer their scholarship in conducting this course, a certificate course where when we successfully complete all the sessions, we'll be receiving a certificate from Matama Theological Seminary. All those who are joining this course this time is going to have an exercise on our doctrine, the various Christian doctrines that we have, and you'll be engaging in theological discussions. When we speak about theology, it is God talk. So all the sessions will open a platform for every student to engage in talking about God. Certainly we can claim that we know so much about God, the loving God, the God revealed in Jesus Christ, and the God whom we know because of the Holy Spirit the indwelling spirit in us. But then we need to humble ourselves in saying that we know only very little about God. And here is a platform where we can openly speak about God. And in engaging in this God talk, I am pretty sure that we'll be learning more about theology deepening our faith in God and also finding more relevance to the faith practices that we have in our life, in our family, and in our church. Faith and pandemic is the topic that we have chosen. Faith is not a closed entity. As COVID pandemic is a new 
tools that we have. This of dolls have its new experiences because faith is live and dynamic. And when you say that faith is live and dynamic, faith has the chance of opening itself, getting transformed. And also, we experience through our faith expressions that we are deepening our faith. So we can very well say, as Cantwell Smith once said, my faith is new every morning. It doesn't mean that we are giving away the faith that we had yesterday. But with the fresh one coming in, we love the new one because that is richer than the faith that we had yesterday. It has more experiences than we had till yesterday. And I wish that all the people who are enrolled in having this course for the next three months will find excitement, will find new insights, will have new experiences. And at the close of the three months training, I am pretty sure that you'll be able to say that my faith is quite new now, richer now, and my faith is enabling me to be closer to God and closer to what God has created. With these introductory words, let me now get into the keynote address. The second COVID-19 wave has triggered a pan panic in the country. Pan panic is relatively a new term, which refers to a strong feeling of fear caused by the COVID-19 pandemic, leading to a lack of reasonable thought and action. As our nation is witnessing mass creations and a deluge of COVID deaths, it won't be an exaggeration to say that it is not just the people, but the whole system that is in pan panic. Action plans and strategies seem to look struggling at this moment. The prestigious public health system of many nations is finding it difficult to cope up with the present situation. This we experienced recently, even in our state here in Kerala. COVID-19 rewrote the entire narrative of the human predicament. It opened up a new reality, the reality of the new normal. The pandemic affected the whole of humanity and unleashed massive suffering. It resulted in the loss of human life on a large scale and threatened the equilibrium of public life. Even the economic and social ramifications of the pandemic are devastating too. It challenged the life situations of many. Loss of job and the resultant economic deprivation is continuing to create a havoc in our life. This pandemic and our response to it and the changes it brought is going to be one of the strongest marks in the historical memory of this planet. And we are going to be part of it. 
So the question of how to remain faithful, identifying the role of the church and faith community in addressing this crisis becomes a pertinent one. I have two things to mention over here. One, as people of God, we cannot be silent and unresponsive. Two, whatever be our response, it will be our witness and memory to future generations. Along with the sociological, psychological, and economic dimensions, addressing the issue of COVID-19 from a faith perspective is quite a challenging one. Theology is our understanding of the nature of God. This in turn influences the way we see and respond to God and the created world. So the challenges which we are facing today is providing a unique opportunity to church to formulate a right theology. And on the basis of that theology, a strong faith which will ultimately lead to the witnessing. The questions like, why this pandemic? Why in our times? Do humans cause dis disasters? Is God hungry? Whether God is punishing us? Where God is amidst in this crisis? Such questions of the Odyssey are echoing aloud and finding answers for it has become a strenuous task for each one of us. Dear friends, these days, many are even finding it difficult to get assurance by taking lessons from the annals of history and the verses from the scripture. But the reality lies in the fact that it is amidst such painful and tough situations, the mission of the church has gained shape and stature. It is from this crucible that our faith responses need to rise up to become new faith acclamations. The challenge lies in crafting and reimagining one's faith to cope up with these challenges. The call is to reclaim the God of Exodus the God who travels with the suffering community and overthrow the pseudo gods of material prosperity manufactured by the prosperity theology and the like. This is achieved through careful theological rearticulations and spiriting rereading of the scriptures. It is here, I believe, the role of Emuna, the online learning course by Matama Theological Seminary Kotem, becomes a promising one. The Matama Theological Seminary has always been in the forefront in imparting theological learning and engaging in meaningful discourses. Hence, a systematic learning from this institution and its eminent scholars is sure to be a blessing to everyone. The name that is given to this course is Emuna. This is a Hebrew word. It means faith. <clears throat> the beauty of the Hebrew language is that it bases much of its vocabulary and grammar on root words, varying the vowels and adding different endings to these roots, gives an array of words with deeper connotation and meaning. The three root letters of Emuna are Aleph, Mem, 
and noon. This is a common root in Semitic language and it denotes the meaning of being strong, diligent, training or educating. <clears throat> These root words in a way help us to understand that faith and academia is connected. Faith is very well connected to education and training. Faith is not a mere sentimental subjective element. It requires training and guidance. It is not blind. Rather, it throws light to one's life. It is here, I believe, Emuna has the possibility to educate and train the faith community to reimagine their faith. As the course name suggests, the aim of this online learning platform, I believe, is to train the faith community to be diligent and confident to face the impending challenges in life. Not only really COVID uh, pandemic, but also the challenges that we may face from time to time. Walter Brookman argues that the present crisis is an opportunity to reimagine the vision of neighborliness. It allows us to have the courage and imagination to enliven a new vision of togetherness. This new situation and the demands of the new normal support us to have communitarian self-assertion that stimulates in promoting a collective social will to combat the situation. This also provides us to have a justice-oriented vision of life and assembles new patterns of togetherness as physical distancing, masking, and sanitized gestures become the new norms of community life. The challenge lies in creating an egalitarian space amid this newness. Here, we also need to a crisis of transgender and pure communities who become vulnerable to severe violence, double oppression, and alienation. We have an arduous challenge before us to engage in God's creative and redemptive act. The call is to manifest the new notion of neighborliness and togetherness that we encountered in the Egypt, in the Babylonia, moreover, in the life and ministry of Jesus the Christ. This challenges us to envision a new notion of togetherness. The challenge before us is to tell God, who emptied himself, God crucified, mutilated, resurrected and ascended to create a new community, the Ecclesia. The radical Ecclesia affirms the theological position of caring, sharing and living for the other. It is work for the redemption of the whole universe. God, like a mother, is groaning with the birth pangs for the restoration of the whole cosmos. This is a vital and powerful expression of hope that goes beyond the perils of the pandemic and challenges to uphold radical faith through radical obedience. It enlivens a radical hope as expressed in the book of Daniel. It lightens up new expressions of enduring suffering as portrayed in the book of Lamentations and stares us the need to affirm life as taught in the book of Job. One major problem in interpreting the pandemic as a punishment of God is that it goes beyond the conviction 
and Christian affirmation of hope and faith in a just God. God doesn't create this pandemic to punish humanity. It goes off scale with the rhythm of the chaotic understanding of God. However, from, the, from a faith perspective, we need to look at it as an arena where God is at work to restore the tormented world through health workers and others fighting to control and lessen the impact of the pandemic. It is a journey to move away from the hegemonic notions, to work hand in hand with God, to transform the dehumanizing situations. Now is the time to adorn the role of being a faithful, created co-creator in the restoration of the humanity. Another new norm of the pandemic is the concept of social distancing. The physical distancing is not negating our proximity to each other. Rather, it is a new norm of prox for proximity. It is the awareness of the fact that my physical contact may harm my brother. This distancing spurs out of self-respecting, genuine concern towards our fellow beings. It is a new, new bonding that respects and affirms the meaningful and healthy existence of our fellow beings. This is an expression of our commitment to humanity and commitment to God. It is something that one has to realize here and now, not something that is more, that is mere supernatural. Bible, the Holy Bible proclaims that the people who endured the catastrophic and traumatic experiences of alienation, subjugation, oppression, and migration did not advocate the slogan that everything is going to be okay by the next day. Rather, they tried to actively engage in situations and struggled to work as a catalyst of change. Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego showed perseverance and endured faith in the alien land. Their cry was not to get away from the catastrophe, rather encounter it through witnessing the living God. Suffering is a reality. This reality is well expressed in the Bible. God never promises a life without suffering, but assures and exhorts us through suffering. <clears throat> It is adjourning with God to find new meaning in the new normal situations. Dear friends, it is radical faith. We believe in God because he is delivering us. We believe in God because God is with us as our fellow traveler in every struggle of this pandemic. God is not away. He is with us and he is a core traveler. It helps us to understand our true relationship with God that enlivens hope. If I ask you what is the story of Bible, then what will be your answer? God has created this world and at the end of creation found and proclaimed it as good. God has created this world not to condemn later, but to let it grow. In God's world, humans and rest of the natural order exist harmoniously in the presence of God. <clears throat> and there'll be natural consequences when those relationships are tampered and broken. Broken relations in God's creation are the consequences of personal as well as 
systematic and structural alienation from God and from God's plans. But in the midst of all this, God's word tells us the story of God's intervention and restoration when those harmonious relationships are broken. God allows us to disturb him. That statement may be a surprise to people who listen to that for the first time. But he, God allows us to disturb him. But God is one who restores us even when we, because of human act, break our relationship with God. This pandemic is not a natural disaster. Instead, it is a disaster of our own making. <clears throat> At the time of this devastating pandemic, our good news is that in Jesus, there is hope for our broken world. Jesus has never promised life without suffering. Death and all the pain and distress it brings is part of life. But while on his way to face death, Jesus tells his disciples that he has conquered the world and to have peace. Therefore, any theology which promises life without pain, illness, and death is not according to the teachings of Jesus Christ. Now the challenge in front of us is how to have peace and be assured of God's presence in the midst of this pandemic. Our theology must take seriously the fact that even during this pandemic, when so many lives are lost and so many are sick, getting healed, the presence of Emmanuel, God with us, is assured. Dear friends in Christ, as the pandemic teaches us about the necessity of distancing and isolation, <clears throat> now is the time to have solidarity with each other, to strengthen our togetherness. As a community, we need to affirm our collective faith assertions and live in through a collective social will. The communitarian component rooted in love and togetherness, togetherness should be avowed. Even in the midst of the absence of touch, proximity, and the resultant imperceptibility, one needs to find new possibilities in rekindling hope to the community. This is what the cross teaches us, the cross of Jesus teaches us, the solidarity of God with the suffering humanity. It talks about new connectivity. When our worshiping places remain closed, fellowship meetings and community gatherings remain locked under digital platforms. It resonates well with the aban abandonment of Christ suffered on the cross. It strengthens us with new norms to withstand this loneliness and alienation. In this time of pandemic, when world is reeling under fear, the church is called to be the beacon of hope. Hope is the church's only shield to face the fear desperation, and hopelessness. But what type of hope are we talking about? It is not just a wishful thinking or a prayer that something good will happen sometime, somewhere. Instead, Christian hope has two very genuine dimensions. One, biblical understanding of hope is a confident expectation that good in the future will surely happen and God's supreme will of redemption and restoration will be surely fulfilled. This confident expectation is not a human prediction, 
Instead, it is derived from churches, existing experiences of God's goodness, love, and faithfulness shown towards us. Number two, Word of God very firmly affirms that even though primarily hope comes from God, then also church has a big role to play in its fulfillment. We read in the book of Hebrews chapter 6, beginning from verse 10, where it says, For God is not unjust. He will not overlook your work. And the love that you showed for his sake in serving the saints as you, will, you still do. And we want each one of you to show the same diligence so as to realize the full assurance of hope to the very end. So that you may not become sluggish, but imitators of those who through faith and patience inherit the promises. During this pandemic, church is God's holy nation, set apart to carry out God's mission in a broken and a grieving world. Church is called out to have a different lifestyle based on the following actions. One, church must lead the communities to repentance and reconciliation by encouraging them to have a different mindset and lifestyle on the face of this pandemic. Two, COVID-19 is an opportunity for the church to live out the healing ministry of Jesus in a very special way. When the medical caregiving community is busy with dealing with physical aspect of healing, church is especially called out for emotional, psychological, and spiritual healing and encouragement in all the different needs of humankind. Three, along with the physical suffering, there are so many byproducts of this pandemic. Isolations, uncertain lockdowns, economic distress, job losses, apathy of migrant labors, shortage of medical resources, and infrastructure, aged people, highly vulnerable children, and increasing numbers of death are some of them. In such a scenario, it is very much essential that church must respond with the same compassion that Jesus Christ showed during his public ministry. Number four. Church must not find solace in doing one or two programs. Instead, church must come out in war footing. On every congregational level, needs must be identified on the community level. Specific plans must be made, resources be gathered, and plans be implemented to fulfill God's mission. Dear friends, this crisis is not an end. New life, new faith expressions, and assertions are enthralled by living out the crisis through scriptural roots. This is what the biblical faith affirms. It opens up new promises and the new vision of life and community living. A practice of neighborliness mutuality and complementarity, which denies all kinds of exclusions and othering is expressed in this. Faith strengthens, faith strengths and challenges to envisioning the life drawing upon the model of the crucified God. The crucified Jesus Christ helps us to endure the pain and the uncertainty and guides us to have positive imputers to withstand these agonies. It affirms our belief in the one God who journeys with the suffering ones and pitches tender amidst them. 
Let me wind up my words by going back to the words of word of Emuna. <coughs> in one of the <coughs> in one of the most famous and poignant praises of the Pentateuch, Moses is seen enduring endless provocation of the people who are now complaining about the manna of which they are sick and tired. They want the meat to eat and claim to remember how wonderful it was back in Egypt. Here Moses says to God in Numbers, in the book of Numbers, chapter 11, verse 12. He is asking the question, have I conceived all these people? Have I begotten them? that thou shouldest say, say to unto me, carry them in thy bosom as a nursing father beareth the suckling child unto the land which thou swearest unto their fathers. This phrase, nursing father, is a marvelous one. And its root word in Hebrew resonates with that of Emunah. Faith requires nursing and nurturing. Just like Moses who nursed and nurtured the faith of the Israelites before they reached the promised land, I pray and believe that this online learning will edify our faith and train us all to nurse and nurture the faith of the community amidst the disruption unleashed by this COVID pandemic. Today, church must respond with its innermost being. If church feels the same pain as by the people affected by the virus and respond with love, grace, hope, and compassion in Christ, our communities will see God's love expressed through the church. Dear friends, it is to this end that God has called us. With these words and with your permission, I inaugurate the online three-month course on faith and pandemic, a course that is given to us by the Matama Theological Seminary. May God's name be praised and we all be blessed. Thank you. God bless.